small bout into deception is typically transient, is an incidental finding uh, for other reasons. You might see it, you might order an ultrasound for an appendix or for, uh, or for an interception, and you might notice that you have a smaller interception like lesion, but usually not in the right upper or right lower quadrant where the iliocolics usually are. Um, it is incidental, uh, they're smaller than the large bowel interceptions, so usually the mean diameter is about 1.4 centimeters. And you can have clinical symptoms with this, but they're usually not comparable to iliocolic interceptions. So this is a young girl, I think she was an eight-year-old girl, uh, right here in the right upper quadrant, because you got the, the gallbladder right here. You have this interception. It's a target-like lesion. It looks like a donut or a bullseye. But it's measuring 1.7 centimeters. It's kind of small. And here it is in longitudinal. And then 15 minutes later, it wasn't there anymore. So if you do see a uh, small bowel interception, or if you see uh, something you think is a small bowel interception, especially if it's like in the left upper or left lower quadrants, or midline, epi or epigastric, or pelvic regions, just wait, measure it, put Doppler on it, um, wait and see if it goes away by itself. They typically do. Here's another case, three-year-old female, left upper quadrant, so iliocolic, if you remember the, the ilium and the colon is on the right lower part of the abdomen. This is in the left upper quadrant near by the spleen. You have a small target-like lesion. It measure, I don't have the measurements here, but you can tell it's small. And here it is in sagittal. You can see it going into itself right here. And then 15 minutes later it was gone. And this patient was asymptomatic. And then this is another patient which uh, had a regular um, interception. They're two years old. They presented with uh, abdominal pain intermittently and jelly-like stools. So it's diarrhea with a little bit of blood. Um, here's right upper quadrant. You have a large target-like lesion. And then you can compare it side by side. He also had, incidentally, a small bowel interception in the left lower quadrant. And you can see it's about one, you know, two-thirds the size of the iliocolic interception. So this was a cool case. The most common form of large bowel interception would be the iliocolic. That would be where the ilium, which is usually right here, this is the ilium, goes and folds into the, the first part of this, uh, the cecum and the ascending colon. Other things you can see with the large intestines are inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. You could also see uh, diverticulitis or diverticulosis. Usually diverticulitis. Diverticulosis is not routinely diagnosed with ultrasound. So like I said before, interception is an obstruction, uh, they, which what happens to the bowel is it telescopes into, into itself. So let's pretend this is the, the, the ascending colon or the cecum, and then this is the ilium. This part folds into this part, creating an obstruction. Uh, on transverse, you have a donut lesion. This looks very tasty right now or a target-like lesion. Um, is, it is an obstruction. Um, the mean diameter is usually 2.6 centimeters, much bigger than the 1.4 uh, I mentioned earlier for the small bowel interceptions. Um, a lot of cases are idiopathic. Um, they don't know what's causing it. Usually they think it's lymphadenopathy where the enlarged lymph nodes are acting as a lead point. Uh, other cases you have hemorrhages that act as a lead point or Meckel's diverticulum. And the symptoms, as I said before, vomiting, intermittent crying, crampy abdominal pain, and current jelly stool. And here's a, a good mnemonic, like the movie Inception, a dream within a dream. Well, intersession is like a bowel within a bowel. And it's kind of funny. So here you got a little diagram. The proximal part is called the intersusceptum. And then the distal part is called the intersusceptions, or the receiving part. So just think recipient or receiving, is the part that's distal. In the case of iliocolic, this would be the ilium, this would be the cecum. All right, here's a very nice case of a large iliocolic interception that went all the way from the right lower quadrant all the way up to the right upper quadrant. Here you can see a thick walled colon with a mesenteric fat, and here's the ilium within it. And here's a longitudinal image. Here you can see the interior wall of the colon, and then the ilium right here with some mesenteric fat and a lymph node. So this is what they call the pseudo kidney sign because it has a similar appearance to a kidney with the sinus fat and then the cortex. So here's another interception. One year old male. You see it's in the, it's in the right upper quadrant. Here's your right kidney. Here's a piece of liver. And here's your target lesion and transverse. And here it is in longitudinal. So you have the large bowel outside and then here you have the ilium within it. And you also have many lymph nodes. 
which a lot of times you will see lymph nodes. Sometimes you might not see it within the interception, but you will see a lot of uh, mesenteric lymph nodes. Here's another case which a patient had interception, and if you look at the wall, it looks kind of heterogeneous. It looks like there's little cystic spaces. There's free fluid as well, and it just had an abnormal appearance. This patient actually had the interception so long that it led to uh, ischemia and necrosis of the bowel. She had to have surgery to have you know, a section of bowel removed, seven-month-old female. Uh, hit the like and uh, subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the little notification bell. Uh, as always, you can fo follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also find my website at sonographictendencies.com. Thank you.